Guys, welcome back to the channel. We're in the garage. We're talking about Tesla charging. So if you're new to Teslas or you want to learn more about charging, how you should charge, where to charge, can you charge at home? I want to talk about that, all the basics right now. This is my 2015 Tesla Model S. It's the P85D. I've had this about three years, and then I've had this uh, Model Y. This is my 2022 Model Y long range. I've had this since August of 2022. Uh, so I don't know, seven, eight months or so I've had this car. Love both cars. I want to talk about charging. Now the ABCs of charging, guys, if you, if you don't remember anything else about this video, remember this. ABCs of, of Tesla charging, always be charging. You need to always keep these cars plugged in. In my garage, I have the Tesla wall connector installed here. I also have one in the front of my garage. And whenever I'm home, whenever these cars are in the garage, I have them always plugged in. So these cars are always charging. I only have the charge limit set to 80%. So when you're in the car, you can go on the charging screen and you can adjust how much you're charging the car. You can go from you know zero to 100%. It's probably recommended to charge for daily use. You know, charge it between you know 70 to 80 percent. Really, only go up to 100 percent if you're doing like a road trip or if you need the maximum range. If you're going to be doing a ton of driving that day and you need maximum range out of your battery, charge it to 100 percent. But it's not it's not recommended to go 100 percent every single day. So, as an example, if I take my son to karate, which is five miles that way, five miles back, I use a 10 mile a 10 mile round trip in my car. I've depleted 10 miles out of my range. Right in this car at 80%, it's around 250 miles is the range on the screen. So I drive my son to karate, I come back, and now now I have 240 miles. Well, even though I still have 240 miles, I still plug the car back in when I get home, so that it's slowly charging back up to that 250 miles, which is my 80% charge limit. The reason why, guys, I always keep this charged in, I always keep it plugged in, is I always want to have that 80% state of charge in my battery. Now the biggest pain point of owning a Tesla or any electric car for that matter is the range and the speed or the quickness in which it's going to recharge. So to eliminate that hassle or that frustration with the battery and the range, like this Model Y long range can charge up to you know 200, uh, 325 miles of range. I never really drive that much in one day and so I don't really need that full amount every single day. I never want to be in a position where I don't have at least 80% of my battery because sometimes I don't know what my day holds. Sometimes I might have to drive 100 miles somewhere and back and if I've let my battery get down to 50%, like if I'm only going to charge it when it gets down to 30% and then charge it back up to 80, well, I could be in a position where I may not be able to make that trip. I may have to take my gas car or I might have to stop at a fast charger and pay triple the amount of for to, you know, to fast charge this car. So I never want to be kind of put in that position where I can't use the car how I want to use it. So I always keep it plugged in whenever it's at home. Guys, because these cars are so cheap to charge at home, you know, maybe 20, 30, $40 a month, depending on how much you drive to, to, to keep these cars charged up. I'm not worried about plugging it in all the time and having it fully charged up. That's really, that really helps make the ownership a lot easier. If you just don't worry about the charging, yeah, it's going to add a little bit of extra cost to your, your electricity bill but you don't have to worry about stopping at the gas station. You don't have to worry about paying these high prices for gas. You just plug in, keep it at 80%, and that's just made things a uh, stress-free with owning these cars. You don't have to, I don't have to worry about the range. I don't have to worry about the, the state of the battery. I just I know that it's at 80% when I go out to the car every time. I can, drive, I can drive, go on the trip, run my errands, go to work, do my commute, and I know I'm gonna be just fine because I know I've got that 80%. So these cars have two batteries. They have a main high-voltage battery, a 400-volt high-voltage battery that powers the motors that makes the motor that makes the wheels go and then there's a 12 volt battery under the hood that powers all the electronics like the screen the, the door handles the blower on the ac you know all of the, the the small electronics are powered by a 12 volt battery and so you want to keep that 12 volt, volt battery topped up keeping it plugged in is going to help keep that 12 volt battery charged as well as the main battery pack as well here in the trunk of my model y i keep my mobile charging connector now as of right now, like May of 2023, this no charging equipment comes with a new Tesla when you order it. You have to either buy this or the wall connector. This came with mine. I ordered mine in August of 2021 and it came with mine. And so I didn't have to buy this separately. I did have to buy this NEMA 1450 adapter. Uh, mine came with the regular wall outlet. So I want to show you the three different ways you can charge your car at home and how you do that. So Tesla on their website, they sell this mobile connector bundle that comes with the 110. So this is the, the, the 15 
amp 110 outlet. This just fits in a regular outlet. You can charge your car off of a regular household outlet. This would be like the absolute bare minimum that you would want for your car. And then you can also buy an adapter. It also comes, oh, I think now they come with this. This is the NEMA 1450 plug that, that plugs right into there and you can charge with a dryer plug, like a 240 volt, 40, 50, 60 amp dryer plug that you can get installed in your garage. So this would be the ideal situation because this, this bundle right now is about $230. You get both of these plugs and then you just get an electrician to wire your garage with a plug that would accept this. So when I got my, my Tesla, uh, my first Tesla, I had this installed in my garage with my, uh, my electrician that did this. So I have, this is my mobile connector. I can plug it right in here. And this is on a 240 volt circuit. It's uh, 50 amps. And I'll be able to plug this into the car and this can be my home charger. And when I plug this in, it'll charge at about, you know, 25 to 35 miles of range per hour. So this is, this is a, a very good option that you can do. So the other option, this is like worst case scenario, is you just get this one here. If you don't have an electrician come out and wire you one of these, you could plug your car into this. So what you do is you just pull this, you just pull this plug out here. Plug that there, and then you can charge your car. This is going to take like six days to charge your battery up all the way. I mean, it's going to take a long time. It charges at about three to four miles of range in your battery per per hour. So overnight, you might get you know 30 to 40 miles of range, um, which really is not going to be ideal. These are two different styles of Tesla wall connectors. This this came with my 2015 Model S. Back then, they included this. They included both the uh, the 1450 plug which is that there and with this style of wall connector this actually just it disconnects right here it even has a plug that it will plug into this style of outlet this is the one that came with my model y this is the more current generation where the whole plug assembly disconnects from this box here and you can get different adapters to fit different plugs what i have installed here is the tesla wall connector this charges about the same as the NEMA 1450 dryer plug, the second one there. This changes about the same, but this is a more kind of permanent installation. I think it looks a little cooler uh, than having, you know, just the thing plugged in and hanging down and drooping down like that. This is kind of a more permanent solution that you have directly hardwired into your wall. And it's going to, I think, provide a little more aesthetically pleasing uh, solution. All of these Tesla chargers all work the same. You push the button. When the light is white, you you're able to you're able to pull out, and then when it's and then I can push the button here. You push the button, or you or you touch the flap, and the flap opens. When it's white, you can you insert it in. Blue means communicating, and then flashing green means it's means it's charging. A neighbor in, in my neighborhood bought a Tesla Model Three. They bought it used, kind of bought it off of a, a buddy that was getting rid of it. And, you know, my friend that bought it didn't really know a lot about Teslas. He was trying to just get into it. His only solution was he was just going to plug it into the regular household outlet. He wasn't going to get the wall connector. He wasn't going to get the NEMA 1450, the, the higher powered outlet. He just was charging it off of just a regular outlet. Now, I think if that's going to be your route that you're going to go, I think it really... It, it, you really miss out on the full Tesla experience. I think it really just it frustrates the the whole ownership experience. You don't get the full joys out of your Tesla because you're always worried about range. You're always worried about, oh, I only put 40 miles of range in the battery overnight, so now I can't drive that far. If you have the wall connector or if you have the NEMA 1450 plug installed in your garage and you're always keeping your, your car plugged in and charged up to that 80% level, you never have to you never really ever have to worry about range or battery or finding a place to charge your car your car is always at eighty percent you're ready to go no matter what the day holds and then when you come home you plug right back in it's back to eighty percent and that is the pure joy of owning a tesla is never having to visit a gas station again you're just charging at home you're utilizing your utility rates here it's always topped up you don't have to worry about, oh, did I, do I got to stop by a, a, a charging station? Do I got to fast charge it? You don't have to worry about any of that. The only time you have to worry about that is when you're on a road trip. This was the first Tesla wall connector I got installed, and I was trying to charge both cars off of it. I would have one car plugged into the regular 110 outlet with that mobile connector, 
and then I have one card charging on the uh, fast connector. And I was always trying to like juggle, oh, which one did I drive? Which one did I drive the most? I'm going to plug into that. The one I drove the least, I'm going to plug into the wall connector. And I was kind of juggling charging, charges around. I got this wall connector installed, and then I got the second one installed about a month ago. I did that one myself, so I'll leave a link to that video. But once I have both wall connectors installed, and I keep my cars plugged in all the time, it's just, it really makes it just super stress-free when it comes to charging the cars. So probably my biggest recommendation to a new Tesla owner is before you get the car, if you've ordered one from Tesla, usually it's gonna take a couple weeks, if not a month or so before you get your car, invest in the wall connector or hire an electrician to come out to install the NEMA 1450 dryer plug and buy the mobile connector that has the, the dryer plug, the 1450 plug on it. If you buy that, if you invest in getting that installed in, at your house, your apartment, your condo, wherever you're parking the car, if you have that, it's just going to make the ownership experience much more smooth. You're not going to get frustrated. You won't be frustrated with the range. It'll, it, you'll have a very smooth ownership experience with your car if you have the charging already set up. Now, one thing you can do on the actually the Tesla app, you can actually set up uh, non-peak Tesla charging. So that way, if your electricity provider provides cheaper electricity, let's say overnight or during during non-peak hours. This is where you, you can schedule your departure. So if you leave at 7 a.m. every morning, you can set up a schedule. Uh, here's Oh, here we go. Here's our off-peak charging here. You can do preconditioning. In the wintertime, you'll probably want to do that so that the battery's warm. Um, off-peak, you can I can change my off-peak hours. So there's a way that if, if you don't want it charging in the middle of the day when you're at home, you can set up off-peak charging and you can set that up so that you're only charging when the electricity is the cheapest. Guys, so try to avoid plugging it into just our standard outlet. Upgrade to the NEMA 1450 outlet so that you can actually get the, the charging speeds that you need, that you're not frustrated with the car. It's really just going to make it a lot easier when it comes to owning the Tesla. Guys, hopefully you found this informational, useful, or helpful. I, I know this would have been helpful for me as a new Tesla owner learning about what charger should I get? How should I charge? When should I charge? Guys, like I said, always be charging. Always keep the car plugged in. Charge up to 80% on a regular basis. The, the battery will be happy at that level. Uh, keeping the car plugged in is going to help keep all of the batteries charged, the 12 volt and the main battery charged. It's just going to make for a, a, an easy, stress-free ownership experience with the Tesla. You'll love it. When you own a Tesla and it's always charged up every single night, you've got your full 80% range every day. Uh, it just is awesome. You never have, you never really have to worry about range. You don't have to worry about the battery. You just drive it, plug it in when you get home, and it's all set. Anyways, guys, I'm curious if you have any comments about this, your charging habits. This is how, this is how I do mine. Obviously, leave your comments down below if you have different habits. Uh, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.